Hello everyone, and welcome back to Pokepain, a series where I create new Fakemon to inhabit the Drapor region, my very own fan Pokemon region based on the Virgin Islands. Every Pokemon game out there has its own unique side challenge. The Hoenn and Sinnoh regions uh, have the contest halls, Johto has the Pokathlon, and Unova has the World Tournament. In order to make the Trapor region really feel like a well-fleshed-out Pokemon region, I developed its own sort of side area that will take a similar role in the story. Well, I technically made two, but we're going to focus on the first one today. Many of you may have noticed on the map of Trapor, this building uh, on an island kind of off on its own. This is the Grand Swana Resort a private Pokemon club for trainers known mainly for its unique Pokemon-centered attractions. There's a huge trainer market inside, kind of reminiscent of the department store uh, from other games, and the access to the world trade feature would also be here. And of course, the main attraction that we're going to talk about today is the tournament stage. This place is most similar to the world tournament from Black and White 2, where it would add a lot of post-game content where you could rematch any of the gym leaders there at their full strength once you defeat the champion or even battle trainers from other mainline series games like sort of like how the battle tree was from Alola. It does however have one role in the main story and that is a tournament of sorts that is required to unlock one of the more interesting islands later on and it gave me an excuse to put a couple of more interesting battles in this video. <laughs> We're getting way ahead of ourselves though we haven't even made any Pokemon yet. So let's do that. In most Pokemon games, Eevee uh, cannot be caught in the wild and usually it's only received as a reward for a side quest or a character interaction. I think the promise of receiving an Eevee egg after winning this Grand Swana Hotel tournament would make for both an excellent MacGuffin to drive players to this location and a good excuse for me to make some Eeveelutions today. I'm not gonna explain the gimmick of Eevee because Everyone and their mother knows what this Pokemon is about. But its multiple evolutions posed a good question of what types should I add? I knew it was going to have to be two as aside for an exception in Sylveon, evolutions are always introduced in pairs. There are about 10 unused types and those are normal, fighting, flying, poison, ground, rock, bug, ghost, steel, and dragon. Honestly, more than I was expecting, but there's a few that we can weed out pretty easily. A dragon evolution seems to be way stronger seeming than most of the other types, so making it seem balanced would be kind of hard. And definitely not bug or ghost, as I already have way too many of those that, that ruled those out. One of the types that I really needed more of in this region, however, is poison. A poison type evolution could be pretty cool. So then I reasoned that I should pick a corresponding type that was similar or almost like an opposite that would make a good duo with poison, and steel worked. So yeah, steel and poison. Alright, we've got our duo. I started, funnily enough, with the steel type that I called Chromion, because it was the one that I thought I had the most concrete idea in my head for. It started out as a sort of robo-dog sort of design, but as it came to nearing completion, I realized I didn't really like it. It appeared to be far more aggressive than any of the other evolutions, and that didn't feel quite appropriate, as evolutions tend to have more elegant designs that seem to imply a more unseen power than a physical strength. As it turned out, designing an evolution is a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Their overall design language uses a lot more soft forms than I usually like to use, with a few notable exceptions. And so with that in mind, I came up with a new concept that I thought would serve those shared themes better. I kept the armored pet idea, but instead of going forward in time, I went back in time. I thought a noble knight-like Eevee would lend a lot better to the usually very elegant family. It's always, without exception, very easy to read an Eeveelution's type. And I knew that was another important aspect to incorporate here. So I gave it a bit more of a monochromatic color palette to illustrate its typing better and styled its head fur to make it appear as though it was wearing a helmet. As a holdover from the original, more aggressive design, I did keep some weapon imagery in the club on its tail. And the spines running down its back really gave it a feeling of a sort of rare ancient mythical creature that it is, while also breaking up its form in an interesting way.
Chromion, the armored Pokemon in the evolved form of Eevee. This evolution was discovered when a trainer gave their Eevee a metal coat item to hold. These Pokemon lead chivalrous lives, and they use their immense physical strength to protect other Pokemon. It spends hours a day preening and licking itself to keep its armor well polished. If your Chromion is sick and cannot perform these tasks, its coat will begin to rust. The poison type evolution was a bit more difficult to come up with. I knew I wanted to include the imagery of other venomous animals to make apparent its poison typing. I had the idea of having a stinger of sorts on its tail. As Chromion has a tail that it can use as a weapon, I thought this one should as well. A scorpion tail seems to be a cool idea, and I kept a version of it in its final design. But this just felt as though it would make its typing a little more ambiguous uh, towards the bug type, and I didn't really want to confuse people. The idea came up from a friend that since many evolutions have a sort of neck floof, maybe this one should have a cobra hood to fill in the same area. Its name, which I just love by the way, is a pun on the word corrosion, which is a nod to its evolutionary partner, as the word is defined as a process of degrading metals or other minerals, often with an acid, and acid seems to be as synonymous with the poison type as venomous creatures are. Corrosion, the Toxicant Pokemon, and the evolved form of Eevee. Corrosion use their hood to intimidate their foes. The poison found in the stinger on its tail changes potency with its mood. And for a trainer or Pokemon that it feels enough love for, it can even act as an antidote for most toxins. This evolution was discovered when a trainer gave their Eevee a Dusk Stone to hold. So, now that we have our evolutions, we can move back into the Swana Hotel storyline, right? Well, sorta. The host and announcer of this tournament is a very important figure in this region, and happens to be the same mystery figure that helped you, Ty, and Electra take on Captain Kane. Yeah, I wouldn't blame you for not remembering that part of the story because she was kind of glossed over a bit in that video. But if you do remember, the layered history with Captain Kane that I alluded to in that video was that he is her brother. This very important trainer is the wealthy owner of the Grand Swana Resort and, oh yeah, the champion of the Trapor region. I'd usually save the design of the champion until later on towards the end of the series since that's such an important design, but since she's prominent here and very prominent at the climax of the legendary storyline before your battle with her, I think it's actually best if I design her now instead of continuing to refer to her as the mystery trainer. I took inspiration from a bunch of champion designs, Cynthia because she's by far the most intimidating, but that probably has less to do with her design and more to do with the, well, fact that she's Cynthia. I took a few aspects from Leon as well, as I love the royal imagery associated with that champion, uh, and the rich appearance of Stephen Stone. I decided pretty early on that she would be a fairy type champion, as I think that could make for a very fun final battle. Also because Diantha, who's as close as we're going to get, I think, to having a fairy type champion, was kind of disappointing. I imagine, like Stephen or Lance, their type specialty would be more like a type suggestion. As though many of her team will be fairy types, I'm probably going to make a few themed exceptions. Champions don't tend to stick to one type. I've also thought about making a specific Pokemon to be this champion's ace, and though I haven't designed it today, I'm probably going to give it its own video, as if it's not a pseudo-legendary Pokemon, it will at least be an honorary one. I'm I don't really know what it's going to be yet, too. I'm thinking maybe the fairy-type armadillo that has been suggested a bunch of times in the comments. But, I don't know. We'll see. Her name, Myra, which has a bunch of meanings, it's mainly a Slavic name that also appears in many Arabic and ancient Latin and Sanskrit-based cultures. 
it means a few things in each of these to be admired um, to be a queen or female ruler it means peace and ocean for some reason one of these things is not like the other right <laughs> but um, I'd say that name actually describes this champion perfectly the admired peaceful leader of a region dominated by the ocean it was a little hard to come up with an appropriate color palette for Myra as although the whites and light colors looked really royal as I intended they read more like an ice type trainer than a fairy type trainer although an ice type champion would probably be pretty cool I had a cool idea for an ice type elite 4 member that I plan to pursue developing when I make the elite 4 anyways I, <laughs> I think I came up with something pretty cool for this champion You'll have to let me know if uh, you like the design as much as I do in the comments below. I definitely do, but I might tweak her design probably mostly in the color palette later on. As I got across basically everything else that I wanted to in this design, I'm very, very happy with it. Okay, we're ready to go. We're set up. Uh, we have our champion our, and our evolutions. I think we have everything uh, in line that, we, that we've needed uh, to do to dive right into our tournament storyline. So let's get started. You can stumble upon the Grand Swana Resort at any time during your journey once you've reached the open sea zone. However, it is recommended that you have at least half of the gym badges under your belt before you take on this challenge because the levels uh, won't be adjusted for difficulty. Your first sight of the hotel should be from the beach and a front walkway that wraps around a fountain of a flying swana up to the great marble staircase and the great big oak doors. The front gardens and the lobby seem to be swimming with people at this time, one of which is your rival, Tobias, who gives you the context about the hotel and the tournament and everything going on today. Tobias then explains that he's planning to enter into the tournament himself, and he drags you up to the counter to enroll. There you find no other than your brother, Ty. He comments how the two of you seem to be running into each other quite a bit recently, and that he too is pretty excited as he is entering the tournament and he thinks you should as well as a rematch would be quite fun. Of course, was there ever really any question that you would enter? I don't think so. Out on the battlefield, you and 20 some odd trainers line up under the gaze of a packed stadium to listen to the champion's opening remarks. She exclaims her excitement that you should all be here today and introduces the prize to be a rare Pokemon egg. Wonder what could be in there? The speech end and the crowd of the 20 of you disperses. Round one begins. The first trainer is an unnamed ace trainer. And in my mind, this would be the trainer that would have taken the unused starter Pokemon that was left behind when you and Tobias chose your starters. This ace trainer sends out a level 30 Iliumoth with the ability Illuminate. It has the move set Sleep Powder to put you to sleep, Will-O-Wisp to set up the next move, Hex, and as a final stab, Phantom Force. Her second Pokemon, Shell Form Dwubble, is at level 29, with the ability Shell Armor. It has the move set Protect, to of course protect itself, Bubble Beam, and Fury Cutter for Stab and Scald to inflict burn damage. Two Pokemon down, two to go. Her Nixaleki is at level 29, with the ability Static. It has the move set Charge, Discharge, Spirit Shackle, and Hex. Her final Pokemon, like her Dwebble earlier in the fight, will change depending on your starter choice. It is either a level 32 Kamember with the ability Blaze and the moves Lick, Fire Spin, Smoke Screen, and Fire Lash, or if you chose Full Leap, it will be a level 32 Aguirtle with Aqua Jet, Razor Shell, Protect, and Whirlpool. Transversely, if you chose Umbilion, it will be a level 32 Crow Kick, with the moveset Leaf Blade, Bulk Up, Trop Kick, and Giga Drain. At the end of the battle, she laments her loss and vows to battle you once again, when she's stronger. Will she actually? I don't know. As <laughs> you could probably tell, she was just sort of a stand-in trainer to get the ball rolling on the tournament. My original plan was for this character to become a sort of secondary rival, but this was really the only appearance that I've written into the story so far. So if you want me to, I can make a design for her and make her more prominent. However, for now, I'm just going to move on to the next trainer. 
Now that the qualifying round is over, in the next round you will face an old gentleman character, who the champion introduces as a curator of the soon-to-be opening National Preserve in Trapor, that is said to be similar to the Safari Zone, but with a twist. He starts out with a level 30 Carnivine with the ability Levitate. He has the moves Leaf Tornado, Bind, Bite, and Growth. He also has a level 30 Stalagmiton, with the ability Dry Skin and the move set Aqua Ring, Earthquake, Rock Polish, and Acela Rock. He too has a level 30 Drapion with the ability Battle Armor and the moves Fire Fang, Venoshock, Toxic Spikes, and Pursuit. Finally, a level 33 Mamoswine with the ability Snow Cloak and the move set Blizzard, Ancient Power, Takedown, and Earthquake. Those of you who are perceptive may be able to see the theme that I have going on with this team which is a hint to what the safari zone of this region will be like. But I'll keep that a secret for now. When the battle is over, he thanks you for your time and leaves. Now for the semifinals. You come up against Tobias. Tobias has five Pokemon this time. He leads with his tried and true Drake Insect at level 32. It has the ability Intimidate in the moveset Air Slash, U-Turn, Dragon Tail, and Dual Chop. It's now plain to see that his Yippee Chihuahua has evolved into the Beastly Fanabra at level 32 with the ability Vampirism. It has the moveset Ice Fang, Giga Drain, Pursuit, and Faint Attack. His next Pokemon changes depending on the Pokemon that you chose at the beginning of your journey, and is the Pokemon that's meant to cast some type diversity into your rival's team. The type of this Pokemon will match the type of your starter. If you are like me and chose a Gwirtle, he will have a level 33 Semi-Aqua on his team. With the ability Water Absorb and the moves Aqua Tail, Lick, Muddy Water, and Circle Throw. If you have an Umbelion on your team, his Semi-Aqua will have been replaced with a Palava with the ability Flame Body and the moves Earth Power, Lava Plume, Sunny Day, and Fire Spin. Or he will have a Deloink. With the ability Gluttony, it will have the moves Synthesis, Rollout, Stomping Tantrum, and Smackdown. His penultimate Pokemon is another new face, the normal and poison type Venwana. At level 33, having the ability Selective Venom, its moveset is Gunk Shot, Dragon Tail, Belly Drum, and Beat Up. His final Pokemon, of course, is the starter that is strong against you. If you chose a Gwirtle, his Crow Kick will have the moves Trap Kick, Synthesis, Bulk Up, and High Jump Kick. Or should you have chosen Fully, his Kamember will have the moves Fire Lash, Flame Wheel, Smoke Screen, and Spectral Thief. Or if you should have chosen a Billion, his Armortal will have the moves Water Pulse, Crunch, Razor Shell, and Protect. Well that was one hell of a battle, but having won the round, there is one more battle in your way to getting that mystery egg prize. In the final round, we come up against Ty, who now that he's battling you for real and doesn't have to hold back for the sake of a gym battle, he leads with his level 34 Pincurchin. Having the ability Poison Point with the moves Toxic Spikes, Baneful Bunker, Liquidation, and Smokescreen. His second Pokemon is another that we know all too well from the gym battle back in Reef Sea Town. His level, his level 33 Sun Alphen, with the ability Inner Focus, and with the moveset Bubble Beam, Aqua Jet, Sing, and Bounce. A new face joins his team at level 32, the Aquaguana with the ability Selective Venom, with the moveset Aqua Tail, Belly Drum, Venoshock, and Pursuit. His next Pokemon is a beastly level 35 Octillery, with the ability Suction Cups. It has the moves Octazooka, Ring Out, Rock Blast, and Acid Spray. He may have brought down the rest of his team, but that might not have been a very good idea, as he now sends out his ace, a Tormarine at level 36. It has the moveset of Surf, Protect, Rain Dance, and Razor Shell. Leaving the hotel a winner, 
you are approached by the gentleman that you battled earlier. He talks about the park that he wishes to open while sprinkling in that he spare no expense with the most unique biological attractions that will drive kids out of their mind. If you can figure out the movie that I'm referencing with those quotes, you'll probably be able to figure out what's so special about this particular safari zone. Or should I say, park? That might be giving too much away. <laughs> he gives you a ticket for the first day entry and tells you to come by as soon as it is open. As he hands you the elegantly written ticket, he looks down at the prize egg, bringing your attention down to the Pokemon that's just hatched out from inside. It's an Eevee. Hmm, how about that? <laughs> well, that was quite an episode. If you're all still with me after that info dump, then I applaud you. Which one of the evolutions would you choose? I love them both, but I think Chromion squeaks out just by a little bit. For my favorite, at least. If you have a suggestion for a future Pokemon, then leave it in the comments below. Spooky season is almost upon us, and I might need a few ideas. We'll see. As always, if you like this video and want to see more like it, then subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.